Hello, it's Mark from Lightmap. Let's take a look at the new workflow for using HDR Light Studio with Blender. Okay, first things first, we've got the scene. It's rendering in cycles. Uh, we've got the default world settings. Let's check HDR Light Studio add-on is installed. Yes, it's installed HDR Light Studio for Blender. It's on. You'll need to install the add-on and the HDR Light Studio application. Okay, so if we come to the world and we look here, we have a HDR Light Studio section. If I press start, HDR Light Studio will now start and it will take control of the texture on the world. Okay. In terms of the interface layout, if we go to Window, Layout, Load, Default, Blender, this is the new default layout. So, if we press play in the render view, the viewport from Blender now displays inside HDR Light Studio. Uh, so we can see the lighting and drag and drop lights and position lights directly in this view. Okay, let's arrange our interface and make the render nice and big. A little note, these lights are about HDR Light Studio asking for and receiving the viewport image from Blender. If we go to the render view settings, pick Blender Blender, this refresh rate is shown here. This uh, 250 is a quarter of a second. So we'll get a new image every quarter of a second. And that's about a sensible speed uh, to be getting these updates, just so you know about that. Okay, so to get things started, We've got our presets. Let's load a preset lighting design. Right click, replace lights with rig. That will delete all your lights and put all the rig lights in there. There you go. So there's that lighting design loaded and we can solo these lights. We can turn individual lights on and off. We can do what we like with this lighting design uh, once it's loaded. So use rigs to learn about how different types of lighting uh, have been constructed uh, that can be quite useful for you okay but we're going to start ourselves for our lighting design with a base environment so let's edit delete all and then use the tag hdri haven interior and we're going to just drag and drop the hdr onto the view and there it is added to our lighting design. We'll turn down the brightness very low. Let's, let's use the big minus button to keep halving that. In fact, what we'll do is we will change the environments because I don't really like this one. And we will use the audition feature. So turn on audition with this light selected as you hover over any of these maps now, we'll be able to see the effect of that lighting. Um, so we'll hover around. That's quite neutral. So we'll double click that and that will actually apply it to this light now. And we'll turn off audition. Um, I'll turn down the brightness a bit. Okay, so there's some ambient lighting there uh, for this scene. Makes it a bit interesting. Okay, let's go to the Light Preset tab. And let's drag and drop a light to be the background. Um, what I'll do, let's, let's do this one. So change the um, light paint method to Rim drag and drop the light in the view that will actually place the light behind uh, over here now I'm going to press R to scale 
I'm going to scale that up in the view and I'm actually going to turn that down to be black. So there's a, a black background there uh, behind the scene and then we've got a bit of ambient lighting. Okay, so you can use lights uh, if they've got blend mode over and you turn down the brightness to zero, you can use them as a bit of a blocker. Um, and then if we created, say, a soft round light and clicked in the view because we've got rim mode, it will place that light in the background behind there and we can turn that down in brightness to do a little a little graduation of light behind there. Okay, so that's the starting point. So let's change the uh, light paint method back to reflection. And now we'll, let's just pick a kind of spotlight kind of look. Okay, let's drag and drop that onto the view. And where that's dropped, it positions it on the HDR. And to reposition with the light paint move mode, just click in the view and you can put that where you want. Okay, so that's actually all the lighting so far is coming from the HDR IMAP. With uh, Blender and HDR Light Studio, we can create and control area lights. So let's turn on the area light checkbox. And now this light is an area light. You can see it on the map, but it is not part of the map being shared with Blender. This is just a representation. So Smart Dolly, let's drag that slider in and we're bringing the light closer and further away from the model. So if we solo this light, you can now see the effect of that light on the scene and we can still position it by clicking on the model and if we change the light paint method to illumination and click on the floor here it will place the light directly above the floor and as I uh, use smart dolly it will change the distance of that light from the floor and then I can turn up the brightness and I can bring it closer if I want just outside of the view We'll bring it really close. Now, one really important setting, the uh, Smart Dolly Scale. So as I uh, bring uh, the light closer, I have a nice amount of control using this slider. Depending on your scene scale, you may want to change this setting uh, in preferences, which controls the scene scale when making area lights. Uh, the setting is called Smart Dolly Scaler. So imagine we got this uh, totally wrong and we had it set for a very large scene and we make an area light and we're like, okay, let's bring this closer. You'll drag this closer and it's still far away and all of a sudden it will be virtually touching and you've got no fine control over the distance whatsoever. So change this setting for your scene so 0.1 for this scene was lovely and now I've got lovely fine control when it's close and then I can keep taking it far 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 away if I want to okay if we return to blender we can see that that light has been created uh, as a light in blender and if we come to the HDR Light Studio settings, we can see this little section called Area Light Type. There are two ways we can make area lights. This, uh, by default, they are mesh emitters. If we change this to Blender Area Light, that will dynamically rebuild uh, and the light will be constructed as a Blender Area Light. Um, they both behave slightly differently uh, in terms of their visibility and uh, being able to control the spread. So if I have Blender Area Light selected and I go back to HDR Light Studio, the Blender Area Light will honor the spread setting. 
So that's a really good advantage. So we can basically control the spread, get the light you know, as close as we want, um, and control the projection of that light. So if I bring that spread to be zero, and then if I audition the appearance of a window, we literally are projecting that window uh, or whatever it is. So we have some lights in here which are window gobos. So you can use that spread setting at zero and project different lighting designs onto your model. So that is an advantage of using the Blender area light type. So I'm going to leave it on that setting actually because I like it. So all the area lights will get made in the, within this container and uh, they'll all be named as per the lights in HDR Light Studio so you can see what's going on. And uh, if we show and hide lights uh, in HDR Light Studio, so if, if we were to hide that, uh, that would be hidden inside of uh, Blender. So everything's kept up to date and synchronized between the two. So if you decided you didn't want this to be a light that was an area light, you can uncheck that box and it will return to the HDRI map. Uh, but the lighting effect will be uh, quite different depending on how close it is to your model. Uh, lights that are far away will look very similar whether they're on the map or their area lights. Um, okay, so let's make that an area light again. And uh, let's change the spread and put it back to uh, being very diffuse. So click over here. Uh, in terms of the light paint methods, uh, we've been positioning with illumination on that one. We can position with reflection if we've got a reflective object like this monkey. And uh, let's make the light quite small. So I'll come to this view. I will press uh, R for scale. And then I will scale down the light. And we're going to make this light quite bright. So we get a nice... Uh, shadow we can change the position of the light using the shadow position so now with the light paint method set to shadow I can click and orbit the light so that the shadow is in the direction of where I'm clicking to do this you need to place it with reflection or illumination because that sets the pivot point and then when you use shadow, that will move the shadow. Uh, we've got a page on our website about the different light paint modes and how they all work. Do check that out. So in any of these views, we can use the keyboard shortcuts to change uh, the method of what we're doing. So I can press W for move. And even though it's an area light, I can still, in this canvas view, make adjustments to its position. But it's... Uh, it will orbit around the light paint position it's pointing at. Um, so it will behave slightly differently to lights on the map um, because this is an area light. Um, and then I can scale in this view. So often I'll leave this view set to scale for light paint in this view. And then in this view, move. So I can move and scale between those two views, um, which is a nice workflow. Okay, so let's just duplicate this light and put a light facing here. So let's choose reflection, click on here, turn down the brightness, maybe put some color on this one. Okay, so let's just say we're totally happy with this lighting design. It's a mix of a HDRI map at the base with these lights all uh, merging together to create that um, and then we've got these two area lights that have been made in Blender with textured coming from uh, HDR Light Studio. So let's say this is the whole lighting design and we want to finish the lighting process. What do we do? We don't just close HDR Light Studio. If you do close it it actually hides it and it doesn't close it 
um, if you press stop here, effectively the HDR Light Studio is closed and your Blender scene puts these temporary textures everywhere with the HDR Light Studio lighting because you haven't rendered your final lighting and the temporary files have disappeared. So you need to end the lighting process correctly. I'll restart HDR Light Studio. The lighting design is embedded within the Blender scene. So that means when you start us, we carry on where you left off. We've got low resolution textures that are temporary and that have been lighting the Blender scene. These are regenerated. But now we need to press the HDR button and we're going to render the final HDR textures for the lighting. So we'll have a resolution for the map of, let's say, 3K. Each of the area lights, let's say they're going to be 1,500 pixels uh, wide. And then we'll browse and we'll call this demo. So the main HDRI map will be called demo and the area light textures uh, will be called demo with a code on the end for each one of them. We'll see these shortly. Okay, so now I can hide HDR Light Studio. I can stop HDR Light Studio, which will totally stop the app, but my lighting stays in place. And this is because if I just move Blender, we are basically, we've got the EXR files uh, that I've just rendered on disk. They are being used by Blender now. So the lighting is using files on disk. And if I come to one of these area lights and I was to look at its settings and look at the object and we will see there's a texture there and that texture will be coming off disk. Okay, so that's it. The light We've done the lighting and the lighting is finished. This is a standard blender scene with standard blender lights pointing to textures on disk that have been rendered by HDR Light Studio. If you want to edit the lighting design and make changes, as I showed you before, just go to the Worlds tab, press Start. HDR Light Studio will open. It will load the embedded lighting design that's in your scene. And then all of the textures will be replaced with the low resolution real-time textures coming from HDR Light Studio. And once you've finished making changes, so let's say we, so we want to change the color of that light to yellow, and you're finished, you come back, you press the HDR button, you can leave the settings as they are and render over the top of those previous textures. And now we can hide and stop HDR Light Studio. And the scene is left with the updated lighting. Thanks for watching this video about the workflow and happy lighting.